Hey folks, welcome back to another review of yours truly, Sam Bealy, and today I'd like to take a look at this game right here. It's called The Dome by Hope S. Huang, and uh, it is a neat little two-player card game. It does have the ability to go to three to four players. We'll talk about that in the end part, though, in the final thoughts section. Uh, but uh, basically, you're two characters going at each other over the interwebs. Um, you know, digitally attacks, digital attacks, and that type of thing. Also causing some physical damage as well. But uh, uh, let's take a look at it. We'll see what you think. So in a game of the Dome, each player is taking on the role of a internet or a computer hacker that is doing battle with other hackers on the internet or on the servers that make up the internet. And uh, so you're trying to do either physical damage to the actual player or you're trying to do damage to their um, hacking abilities, which is comprised of their deck. So you're doing damage to either the player or the deck. And those are the two ways that you can win the game is by knocking your opponent's uh, health down to zero or their deck down to no cards so that the next time they have to draw cards and are not able to do so, the game ends and you are the winner. So. Your turn is basically split up into four parts. Your first part is your start phase of your turn, which is where any actions... Uh, that your cards in your hand give you or any cards that are in your tableau and the actions that they give you are supposed to take part in the first part of your turn. That's when you do that. Then you move on to your action phase where you have uh, three actions uh, with which to do things. Those actions will go over in just a few moments. And then the next thing is the arrange phase which is basically kind of like a cleanup phase where you would um, uh, clean up your tableau uh, untap cards that have been tapped. Sorry, I used the T word. Um, and then you would move on to the finish phase, which is where any end of turn effects would be handled. And then it would be the other person's turn. The actions that you can take in your turn are you can download information, which is simply drawing new cards into your hand. And you spend one action to draw two cards. You can also res uh, distribute your resources. So you would be taking cards from your hand and placing them underneath your player board in the specific resource pool. When you do that, you just take cards from your hand and place them face down. And you can do that up to two times. So you can use one action to distribute up to two resources in any of the pools that are here. Then you can install uh, programs or actions that are going to be on or rather in your deck. For example, if you take a look at the cards here, the cards are noted as actions, jammers, and then there are also programs. Programs can be installed uh, to your Tableau so that you can use them whenever you would like. For example, this is an auto action that always happens and it says exactly once per turn um, one of your programs gets plus one, minus one during the installation. So that can lessen the cause. Um, it changes how much you have to pay from your resource pool to put actions into effect. Actions are cards that are simply played and then put into a resource pool of your choice. For example, when you play an action, this one right here, you would do the effect that it has. Basically what you would have to do is you would have to have one resource of red available to you and then you would have to discard that resource. That's what the 1-1 one, one means. You have to have one on the outside here and then you have to discard one which is the one on the inside. So if you would do that you would you would play this card spending the, the uh, applicable resources and then doing the effect on the bottom and then this card would be placed face down in the red because it matches the red color. That's the only time that the color of the card has to match the pool that it goes into. If you're spending an action to just distribute resources into your pools, the color of the card does not matter. Only when you play an action and then it gets placed into your resource pool does the color matter. So this one, after you play this action, could not be placed in the blue. It can only be placed in the red. Furthermore, there are also jammer cards, which some jammer cards can be placed from your played from your hand, 
Uh, for example, this one actually says you can open this jammer when a player installs an action to gate that installation. That's the special effect. This one, however, cannot be played from your hand. The card will tell you if it can be played from your hand. But this one, for example, if you wanted to play this jammer on a, on a subsequent turn, you would play it face down on your, your tableau during your installation phase. You don't have to pay the resources when you play it face down, but when somebody is trying to do what it counteracts, you flip it over and then you have to pay the resource and you carry out the, the action. So those are jammers. And then there are also the program cards that come from your hand as well. And these program cards have either an A or an R down at the bottom, as you can see down here. The A stands for auto and the R stands for run. There are some cards that have R on them. Basically a run program is a program that simply has to be tapped in order to be run and sometimes the run programs you have to spend extra resources for them. So there are these program cards that are played face up in your tableau that can be seen by all the players. But the fourth kind that you can choose from is called cracking. And basically this is when you are trying to hack the server to take these different uh, programs and actions into your hand, or I'm sorry, your tableau so that you can use them at another date or use them right away. Um, and the way you do that is by taking one of your cracking markers, you would announce that you're going to try to hack. You have to have resources down here that match the different uh, icons that are on each of these servers. So, so just to give you an idea of a sample couple of turns here, um, Ordic Sue would take um, his or her cards into his hands. And you, you notice that some of them have a zero cost, zero resource necessary. Uh, so those are pretty good to have at the start of the at start of the game because it doesn't require any car cards to be in your resource pile and this one actually allows me to draw two cards so that's pretty cool to have in my starting hand the other ones uh, all require stuff so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to take an action and then I'm going to um, play one of those action cards which allows me to draw two cards. Uh, building my resource and distributing some resources. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started on this guy right here. Um, so I need to uh, build my resources first of all. So I'm going to put, for another action, I'm going to put two down, two resources down into my red resource pool, resource pool area. And then for my last action, I'm going to announce that I'm going to start hacking that program. And I have two reds here, so he automatically goes to that second spot there. And that's the end of my turn. On my, on my turn, I'm going to go ahead and uh, first of all, play this program, which allows me to draw two cards and uh, allocate these two cards to a resource pool of my choice. So I use one action to play that card. It doesn't cost me any resources to do so. So I draw two cards, and then I gotta put these where I want them to go. So I've got a red and a blue resource pool. And then my second action is going to be to play this program, which is a program that I'm going to install in my Tableau. And it allows me to pay one resource. I have to have one blue resource and discard one blue resource in order to use this. So I'm going to do that, which discards this blue resource. Again, doesn't have to be blue, just that's where it goes and then it says deal one damage to the target player so this player would lose one damage like so all right that was my second action and then my third action play that card down into my tableau which is another program and it is a run program which and it says allocate a card from your hand to your resource pool so uh, we're going to go ahead and tap that one as well and I'm gonna put a, another action down here in the blue like that. That's my third action, and now it's my opponent's turn. Ordic Sue's turn comes around, and our first action is going to be to place, we're gonna place two resources into our yellow pile. And then our second action is to continue cracking that program over there. I have two yellows, 
So they go two over like this. And then my final action is going to be to play another one of these that I happen to have. That allows me to draw two cards. And that's my third action. So now it goes back to my opponent. On Jerry Netbus's turn, we're going to go ahead and first of all spend an action to draw two cards. Then we will spend another action to put two cards down into my yellow resource pool. And then I'm going to run this program by spending one of these. And that deals another damage to my opponent. Then I'm going to run this program as well again, and which allows me to alligate a card from my hand to the resource pool. Then I'm going to, for my last action, I'm going to announce the cracking of this action program. And I have one red resource to do that, so we are good to go. And now during the cleanup phase, or the arrange phase, you would uh, write all of your used programs, and now it's your opponent's turn. And this is how the game would commence, would continue rather. Uh, that would be replaced. This gets put back here. And the game would continue in this fashion until, as I said earlier, either your, your opponent's uh, health is down to zero, or your opponent's deck is dropped to zero and they have to draw a card. At that point, the, um, the game is over. And so that is the Dome. Um, it is a neat little two-player game. It could use some polishing. It could be used to be picked up by a bigger publisher uh, and have some polishing put on it, a little bit of development, and I think there's a very good game here. Um, we've, we also played it as a four-player game, and it kind of lacks as a, as a three- or four-player game. Basically, what happens in the three- to four-player game is that one person takes on the role of a mastermind a little bit of a more powerful person that's trying to exert that power over other people that are in this digital battleground. And uh, basically it becomes a one versus all kind of game. My problem with that is, is that I don't think that the mastermind is actually powerful enough to withstand um, three people attacking him all at the same time in a concerted effort. So uh, again, three to four player, it works. But it's not very good as a three to four player game. I really do believe that this is a solid two player card game. Uh, there's a lot of really good back and forth, a lot of neat combos that you can come up with as you're going through uh, the server deck and using those programs as well as the programs and actions that are in your specific deck. Um, the decks are a little samey. Uh, some of the cards do the same thing in all of the different decks, but I think that's more of a balancing factor than anything else. There is differentiation in powers. Um, each player, uh, each character has different, uh, different special ability on their card, and each um, deck plays a little bit differently, although they do have some of the same cards in them. So I do have to say, though, that the rule book was very badly written. Rather, I should say, it was very badly translated into English. Um, definitely um, something that need, would need to be gone over with a fine-tooth comb if it ever reaches the development stage, which I do hope that it does, because it is not a bad game. There, are, there is a good foundation here to work with. So uh, that is the Dome from me. I'll give it one thumb up as a two-player game and no thumbs as a three- or four-player game because I just didn't feel... Uh, that framework. So that is The Dome by Hope S. Huang. See you on the flip side, folks.